G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back for some more Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. So we're back for uh, episode 4 I believe and I was about to head south but I've decided that it might be a good idea to actually uh, spend a little bit of time, explore around a bit and uh, most importantly head north and hunt some kobolds. Mainly because I'm feeling pretty weak and I'm a bit concerned that if I head south I might just go ahead and lose another half of my party again in some sort of crazy situation like meeting that wizard before. So, I thought I will just head north and hunt some kobolds and also take a little bit more time to ex explore around uh, town and meet people. Uh, this guy is named Garrick, so uh, the fact that he has a name lets me to believe he might be important. Garrick. Hail adventurers, I have a proposal for you. I've heard that you're an excellent group of warriors. How would you like a well-playing job as bodyguards for my mistress? Ah, interesting. Um, well, I am always on the lookout for money. I could do with some better gear. Please tell us more. I am Garrick, and I work for Silke Rosona. Sil Silky? Silky Rosanna? <laughs> she's the most skilled musician and actor along the Sword Coast. In fact, she's to play at the Ducal Palace before the month's done. However, she's been having some problems of late. Some thugs have been hired by Feldpost to hurt her bad because she didn't perform at his inn when she was supposed to. You can't blame her for not showing up, what with a villain like Feldpost running the place. She needs mercenaries to protect her until she's ready to go to Baldar's Gate. She's willing to pay about 300 gold. What do you say? Hmm, I don't know much about Feldpost and how much how risky this job would be. Uh, some thugs have been hired by Feldpost, so uh, dealing with possibly a group of thugs if we have to actually end up protecting her. Um, uh, 300 gold though, sounds like a pretty pretty hefty reward. It will certainly weight down my pockets a little bit, and uh, that does sate my appetite. I think you've made a good decision. Now just meet me inside, outside of the Red Sheaf Inn. So maybe we'll go ahead and do that. Oh, okay, it's doing it for us. Fantastic. So uh, this is obviously a significant little mission if it's going to uh, take control of our screen and all. What's going on here? This must be her. Silk, silky, silky Rosanna. So uh, here we are. What's, what have we got? We've got uh, th no, this is Silky here, it appears. So we've got uh, just some commoners. We've got Garrick here, and uh, no? Alright, Commoner, watch yourself. So, I guess if I'm bodyguarding then, I should probably um, take up some bodyguarding-like positions. <laughs> Might be a good idea. So we'll hang around, but I'll talk to her and see if she's got anything interesting to say. So Garrick, these are, my, are the only mercenaries you could find? I guess they'll have to do. You look to be worth about 300 gold. That's what my little Garrick offered you, isn't it? I offered them 300 gold, just like you told me. Well then, I assume Garrick has explained what your duties are. You must simply dispose of the ruffians when they come to threaten me. They shouldn't be too hard to deal with, but I would advise you strike fast. Whatever you do, don't speak with them. One of them is a mage whose mystic words can sway even the most wise of men. Hmm... This feels... mighty suspicious to me. My spider senses are tingling at this. Do not speak to them. Okay, I, I, that sounds like a suitable warning against a wizard. Uh, against a wizard, a wizard. <laughs> against a wizard, like it seems like something I would want to be cautious of. But uh, it also oh, is a little bit suspicious. But uh, then again, you know, I haven't dealt with too many wizards, and she might well be right that uh, it's dangerous to l allow them to speak. Let's see what happens. Here they are now, Feldpost thugs. Strike when I tell you to. Greetings, Silky. We. We're here as you've asked. Hmm, super suspicious. And we have the... Don't try to threaten me. I won't be easy prey for you to beat on. I've brought friends. What are you talking about? We're here with the gems that... Shut up, there'll be no weaseling out of this one. Strike now, kill them all. Ah. Mm. What? What? Stop this madness. We won't murder these who are obviously innocent men. Our deal is off. In any case, you're probably too cowardly to be any good in a fight. I'll deal with them myself after I deal with you. Oh crap! <laughs> okay, so we're like, we're surrounding her, but I actually kind of want to be able to make a quick getaway <laughs> if I need to. So, um, okay, let's, uh, well, these guys are on our side this time. We have, um, we have Silky un uh, uninjured here, but there's also uh, a Garrick, I imagine, will, will be a threat. So I'm a little bit concerned by that fact. Silky, I don't know if she's like a, a, a wizard or what sort of thing she is, but we might have um, Imuin move back, a, move back a bit. 
to a more appropriate bow range. And uh, what spells do we have available at the moment? We have Cure Light Wounds. We have Entangle, which isn't going to be too good here. It's going to it's going to mess with everyone. And uh, Bless. Now I believe Bless can just be cast in general. So I actually cast on myself. How does how does Bless work again? I better double check this. If I go into my spells here, we can uh, learn a bit more about Bless. Upon uttering the Bless spell, the caster raises the morale of friendly creatures and any saving throws they make against fear effect by plus one. Furthermore, it raises all attack rolls by plus one. And uh, the caster determines at what range, up to 40 feet, the spell will be cast, and the instant the spell is completed. It all creatures in a 30 foot radius centered on the point selected by the caster. Okay, so essentially I can cast it in the middle of my party, and uh, that should that should uh, hit everyone. So that that sounds like a, a good enough uh, a good idea. So I'll just I'll just kind of cast it. I guess just just centered on here should be should be good enough. And we'll have our tank uh, close in with the. Uh, opponent here. And where am I? I'm right next to her because I was literally just talking to her. So I'm also going to retreat behind these ruffians perhaps. Maybe we'll go up this way. And uh, I think I'll go for some throwing axe goodness. So let's see how this plays out. She's casting a spell. What did... Khalid did 10 damage to Silky. Spell fire casting failure. Okay, excellent. The melee attacker is interrupting her spells. It's exactly what we want. It looks like her body... Oh! What just happened? Okay, that's bless. Oh, oh man! <laughs> I just—I swear I've just like seen my party evaporate. Oh. Okay, no, we definitely Khalid. <laughs> she just did ten and twelve damage to Khalid in one go. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt. That is. Oh no! Everyone is dying. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Come on, finish her off, finish her off. <laughs> oh man. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, I'll stick around, you know, I'll explore out a little bit, and uh, maybe, maybe we'll learn, you know, we'll, we'll grow in strength a little bit, and <laughs> keep our party alive, but uh... We thank you for stopping the evil witch before she killed us. Well, she might not have killed you guys, but she certainly killed my party members. What were you doing during that fight? You did nothing. What did? What exactly did you give me? And it cannot possibly be worth the lives of my entire party members. A scroll? Is that it? Bounty notice. Be it known to all those of evil intent that a bounty has been placed upon the head of Zygmunt Nevinson, the foster child of Gorion. Huh? This does not seem exactly like uh, what they would have just given us. I'm a little bit confused as to what they've actually given us. But, uh, okay. Well, my party, my entire party just wiped. I'm going to see if she has 400 gold on her. That's nice. And some potions and such. I need to... Um, no, I'm starting to get a little bit encumbered. But uh, I need to now then see if... Uh, <laughs> It's possible for me to get my party members revived. Apparently there's a local church here or something, so... <laughs> Maybe we can we can find out if there's something we can do to revive our party members. If not, I think I'm in a bit of trouble. I don't think I can handle, handle losing five party members in total. So there's the Burning Wizard. Perhaps there's a church up around this way somewhere. <laughs> oh, I cannot believe that. These spellcasters are so dangerous. I... It's just, uh, just get... I just got disintegrated by lightning bolts. So, after uh, searching a lot for the uh, temple to try and revive my fallen comrades, uh, I haven't found it yet, but I was just approached by a woman named Nira. Um, I don't know. Oh, I don't feel like I'd be very trusting of uh, strangers at the moment. What seems to be going on now? Are you serious? Holy crap. You would try to hide from us behind this unfortunate food. Your cowardice proves as deadly as your record. Sounds like she's been hunting. I don't know uh, hunted. I don't know if I want any part in this. I'm already being hunted myself. But I still don't know what you want, so I'd rather not let it happen. Get out of here before me and my new friends decide to inject a fist into your Fr friend friend, just one. 
risk your life for a stranger. I don't know if I... <laughs> hmm. Looks like she's with me now. What can you offer to change that? Your continued existence. <laughs> Ah. <sighs> well, I can't well let this lady go to these guys. I have to do what is right. This may well be the end <laughs> of Zygmunt Nevinson. It's already been the end of many of his party members. It's <laughs> Baldur's Gate is a brutal game. Uh, okay, let's see what we can do. Go, cast your spells. Ah, <laughs> she teleported him away. We can't let her escape. Slaughter them all and we'll sort this out once we find him. Crap. Why is she hostile? She should not be hostile. Um, okay, so it looks like this guy might be a spellcaster of some description. So we'll come down here and uh, try and throw some axes at him. See if we can pick him off. Uh, I hope you can deal with those guys with the swords. Oh! She got set on fire. <laughs> she's got her hair burnt off. Oh man, she's doing alright, staying alright. Come on, keep attacking, keep attacking. Keep attacking, keep attacking. Keep throwing, keep throwing. What's going on? There we go. Throwing axes. A bit, bit slow on the old throwing. Oh no! <laughs> Did I just get... I'm unconscious, okay. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's not going well. She's 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 fled. No, she's I think she's been feared. <laughs> all right, like looks like this bodyguard was knocked unconscious as well. Go, use your bow stuff with all of your might. <laughs> Come on, it's up to you to rescue us. Oh, Greece. Does the 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 Thyan wizard casted grease? Oh, we're back up. We're back into the fight. Back to throwing some axes. Okay, let's just switch over to melee then. See if we can attack this guy. He might be out of spells if we're lucky. I think he might be. Okay, let's finish him off. Well, this might not all be a bust. We might have just made a powerful new ally from the looks of things. She kicked ass. Come on, take him down. Take him down. You can do this. You can do this. All right, throwing axe time. Do it. Yes. Oh wow, 10 damage, nice hit. This guy's pretty tough though, she's like tired herself. Oh, she's been tired. <laughs> Come on, some last, some throwing axe action. There we go, 350 experience. Down to one throwing axe, we'll have to get some more of those. Nero has nothing to say to you. She might. I guess she's still considered to be in combat, but uh, I guess we'll go loot these bodies then. <laughs> we'll see if we can avoid that tile. Here we go. I looked like you did alright handling yourself. I didn't do too much. Hmm. <laughs> That's all well and good, but custom dictates you dump a load of gold into my hand. Uh, what will you do now? Surely a candle will return at some point. Yes. <laughs> I, I believe you, Nero. I think you uh, have that under control. Your company would be appreciated. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, well, welcome to the party. Oh my god, you're almost dead already. <laughs> well, hopefully we don't bump into any, anyone else. Oh, a gem bag. Ideally suited for holding gems. Ah, it, it does it function as a container, it appears. Open container. Ah, a bunch of gems in here, nice. They might be used for spell casting though, so she is she a wild mage? Let's check out a check out some spell action. See what's going on in here. So we've got a uh, Nahal's Reckless Duoma. Duoma. So uh Wild Mage's ultimate last resource spell. When cast, the mage releases a sudden flood of wild magic energy in the hope of seizing and shaping that energy into a desired spell effect. That attempt usually fails, but something almost always occurs in the process. 
To use Nashal's Reckless Duama, simply cast it, and then choose from your list of known spells. A burst of magical enemy is, uh, energy is released. Okay, so it allows you to select a kind of a, a spell from your list, and then uh, hope that that happens. Uh, which, in, in, you'll try to manipulate into the desired form. The actual effect of the spell is determined randomly by dice roll, the wild surge table. Because the release of energy is planned by the maze, its level is added to the dice roll. Hmm, interesting. More often than not, the effect is completely unexpected. Might be beneficial or major. It might be completely disastrous. <laughs> okay, I, I wonder what the uh, benefit then is. I guess it allows you to do any sort of known spell. Gives you a bit more diversity and some basic magic missile action. It's got quite a few other spells there I can check out later. But uh, we'll go check out these loot. But ideally though, we're kind of still screwed if I can't revive the rest of my party now. I'm, I'm fairly certain there must be a temple in here somewhere. So we'll see if I can find that. I might get her to grab some gear and we'll... We'll uh, trade that stuff out later. Aha! So I've actually found that you need to travel over a screen to reach the temple. Seems like this city extends out a bit more further than I would have expected. So, uh, hopefully we're not attacked on the way to the temple as well. That would be quite brutal. But, uh, we desperately need some healing and uh, some revival of party members. So hopefully we have the gold required to do that. 450 gold seems like reviving people from, you know, Bringing people back from the dead would cost a fair bit more than that, so <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Okay, looks like we're in some form of pretty awesome looking temple. But uh, let's see if we can talk to these people here and perhaps get some temple services. Welcome, the traveling adventurer is never turned away from the house of Lathander as we strive to aid all who make a difference in the realms. If you will battle worn, we can extend a number of necromatic restorations. Sounds fantastic. Whatever you whatever you'll need. A small donation is all the compensation we require. What kind of aid can you give us? So Cure Light Wounds, Cure Serious Wounds, Raise Dead. 100 GP! We could do it. Why can't we select it though? Aha! The person who is dead needs to ask to be raised. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, so we can revive our party members. I probably could have left those other two then in my party, but uh, they died in an epically heroic way. <laughs> kind of. And uh, unfortunately they don't get raised, but we still are able to raise our party here. Fantastic. Bru still brutally injured and at much expense to us, but I think well worth it. Oh man. <laughs> so, we have some like curing and stuff that could be done. Uh, still fairly expensive though, maybe resting instead would be a better decision. We'll see how far we can rest and how that goes. But uh, here we are, we're back alive. And uh, we don't have any of our gear. Okay, so then first trip is to go see if I can get my gear back. <laughs> okay, so it looks like my gear is still here, thankfully. <laughs> that would be a little bit harsh if we weren't able to get any of our gear back either. So we'll, uh, we'll get our possessions back and I'll, I'll equip everyone back up. Okay, so everyone's kitted back up. I'm I'm all set up in my gear. Imuin's back with her gear again and uh, we've got Jahira set up. And I've also noticed that I've got quite a few spells to palm off to near the Wild Mage. So depending on what she already knows, we might actually be able to learn quite a few more things. So I'll go through and see if she can learn any new magic. Okay, so we did manage to learn some cool new spells. She's actually got quite a bit. And now we actually have two pieces of unidentified gear there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll uh, go ahead and learn. We'll, we'll, we'll memorize two identifier spells so we can um, actually identify those two pieces of gear after we do some resting. We're going to have to do some sleeping anyway. But we've got a few other things. We've got some grease. We've got uh, Lalox Minor Drain that we got the scroll from our necromancer friend that died. And uh, we've got a few things. We've got sleep. Should be very helpful as well. I've, I've heard that crowd control spells are the way to go. You know, you want to if you can take half the people out of the fight, then I think that will be very helpful. But uh, we're starting to get together a pretty good party now. They just happened to be almost, almost brutally dead. Well, yeah, they were dead. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we'll do, I'll do some serious resting. I think it's gonna make gonna take something like a week or something to get everyone back up to full health. We'll see. So yeah, we're pretty we're pretty strapped for cash at the moment. Even though we made 400, well actually we made a bit of gold from that fight, so we're actually not too out of pocket. But uh, people are gonna have to put up with the uh, the, pe the peasant room for now, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we're almost fully healed up. Our uh, our tank Khalid's still a little slightly injured, but he'll be okay. Uh, and it is time for us to identify some gear actually. I should have done this between nights while I was resting So I might actually have to rest an extra night anyway, so that'll be okay. But we can go ahead and identify this belt. Hopefully it's something interesting We'll use one of our spells. Oh 
Okay, the belt of Antipode. Trimmed in the fur of a polar bear, this sturdy belt is tooled with images of blue moons and white ice flows. The wearer is immune to all cold-based effects, but suffers double any fire damage. Wow, okay, that comes with a big drawback. But cold resistance, so obviously a very handy item to have when we know what we're going to be facing. But uh, just to be wearing all of the time could be quite dangerous, you know. It seems like fire-based attacks would be a bit more common than cold-based attacks, but... We'll, uh, we'll, keep a, we'll keep a hold of that, maybe on Zygmunt, he can uh, pop that on, pop that around his waist if he feels like he needs to. But we have a, 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 a quarterstaff here as well, which could be uh, pretty handy, but Nero has a staff plus one to begin with, so we'll have to see if it's better. We'll use our other star, just simple, simply a quarterstaff plus one, so that's one d6 plus one, and uh, doesn't seem to have any other effects. And this is... Uh, 1d6 as well, with just a plus one to hit, but when the staff strikes a target, there's a 10% chance that either the target or the wielder will take one point of fire damage. <laughs> so, uh, very in line with her wild magics. I quite like her, she's interestingly themed. But, uh, hmm. I think the, uh, staff plus one is probably a little bit more reliable. So maybe I'll go for that, some of that action. 1d6 one. I do actually kind of want to get her a ranged weapon at some point, I think might be a good idea. But uh, she's got a gem bag as well, so that should give us some money. And we've got a few things to sell if we can find a magic shop. But I might head on over to the smithy and uh, we'll sell some of the extra gear that I've happened to, uh, you know, just stumble across pretty casually. <laughs> hmm, okay, so I've made my way into Kagane's shop here, or Kagane's shop. I'm not quite so sure what he sells. It looks to be possibly like potions and magical items or something like that. Uh, what kind of shop is this anyhow? I run an S- oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> not that sort of escort business. <laughs> I hire mercenaries to escort caravans en route from Arm to Baldur's Gate. Right now I'm looking for some strong sword arms, and I'm willing to pay high. Seems that one of the caravans under my protection never arrived at Baldur's Gate, and I need to know what happened. You look like a strong group of warriors, interested in a job. So this looks like the sort of thing that I can find out, perhaps along my travels at some point. But, uh, yes, I am interested in this proposal. That's good. I've been having a lot of problems with bandit activity lately, but they've always only taken the cargo and left the caravan go afterwards. I've been catching flack from my family and some of the pas passengers of this caravan. After all, it was the job of my mercenaries to make sure everyone got safely to Baldur's Gate. Normally I wouldn't give one damn about some stupid whiner, but one of the passengers was the son of Entar Silvershield, and in this part of the world, his word is law. So, do you want the job or not? Uh... Sounds a bit political, but uh, sure, as soon as you tell us how much we'll be paid, of course. 15 gold per head, hmm. As well, the equal opportunity to loot any of the dead bodies the bandits may have left behind. I feel like I'm being ripped off a bit for that. Yeah, I feel like we're being ripped off. Well, that's fine, I can always find myself some more reasonable warriors. <sighs> fine, give us the job. Hey, I'm glad you guys have had some sense in your heads. I have an underling who can take care of business here while I'm gone, so let's move on. Hey, he's coming with us? That is not what I expected. Okay, well, there we go. The, the, the offer is a little bit more appealing to me now, because now we have a sturdy dwarven warrior. Badass, look at this guy's helmet. That's insane, protects against critical hits. Class, this class of decorative helmet made of reinforced leather or matter covers the face and head. Uh, pretty epic looking helmet if you ask me. <laughs> Look at him, he's so awesome. So he's a d straight up dwarven fighter, so we now have two up front guys that can uh, take care of business and take, take, some, take some tanking blows there. But uh, what sort of armor is he? He's only wearing studded leather though. And uh, he's got quite a, bit, quite a few hit points though. He's a pretty, pretty tanky little guy. Pretty stout little warrior, so we can have him along. Are we able to, uh, you know, rob his shop? <laughs> Like, just, uh, just inspect. Alright, uh, okay, doesn't look like there's really anything in here anyway. Like, you can't access the shelf from that side, stupid. Okay, well, we have, um... <laughs> we have a full party now, and, uh, we can head out to the caravan. So, let's just check the journal. We have travel to Nashville, which is our main overall objective at the moment. Important events. And, uh, I believe clear and, uh... Jahira and Khalid want us to travel that way as well, so I imagine uh, that's that's their priority as well. Uh, Kagan's quest is to uh, head out to uh, find uh, Missing Noble along with a cart there, so that'll be on the way to Bola's Gate, it seems. So I imagine we'll be stopping by at Nashkel to uh, find out that stuff first and then check out the cart action. And we have some general troubles in the region sort of thing, and uh, 
Zara and Monteron, unfortunately, will never be making it to Nashkal. Because <laughs> we removed them from the party and they will not be getting revived. Unfortunate for them, but uh, we're, we're pretty set to go now. So, I think I'll have a little bit more of an explore around town. But uh, I think I might take a short break for now because that was pretty... That was, that was a bit much, really. Like, <laughs> we had... Three of our party members wiped out by lightning bolts from a, uh, a witch. Pretty brutal. And uh, we just somehow managed to keep ourselves alive and defend an attack uh, along with the help of Nero, who then joined our party. And we've also picked up Kagane as well to join our party. So pretty pretty cool little group of adventurers now. But uh, my plan was originally for this episode to just go out and slay some kobolds. Things never really go as planned, do they? But uh, anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D. And thanks for watching.